I'm Kaylee and today I'm doing a reading vlog something and today I'm going to be telling you about all the reading that I've been doing for days 14 through 19 of the 30 books in 30 days readathon. more from Rudyard Kipling, both short stories and poetry. I read Jews in Sushan, which is all about a Jewish family in India. And it's a very short, short story. And everybody dies at the end. So, hmm, very cheerful. Well, not everybody dies. Most, most everybody dies. A lot of people die. It's just a lot of dying people. Okay. And I also read The Courting of Dinah Shad. This is a reread for me and it's really funny in parts and kind of tragic and sad in parts. It's really interesting and fun though. For Kipling's poetry, I've read France, which is a poem about the bitter wars between England and France in the olden days and how Kipling wishes that England and France could be better friends. I also read Mesopotamia and the Veterans, Recessional, and For All We Have and Are. For All We Have and Are is really a very inspiring one. It's about soldiers who are willing to sacrifice everything in order to protect their loved ones, their country, their honor. So it's about all the reasons that they have to set aside their own self-preservation and sacrifice their lives for something that's worth it. I thought it was really, really inspiring and sad. And I've been reading a whole bunch of Welsh fairy tales and enjoying them so much. Most of these are only three or four pages long and they're really fun and whimsical and imaginative. And of course, I've been reading a few more poems from Lord Byron. I read Epistle to Augusta. I also read Darkness and that one is really, really depressing. <laughs> It's beautiful, but it's depressing. I read So We'll Go No More A Roving. I thought that one was really sweet and fun. And I read From Beppo, A Venetian Story. I don't think the one that I have in this book is the entire poem. It's just a few stanzas from it. This one describes the beauties of Venice and the beautiful weather and the nature and the the landscapes and everything, and even things like the friendly people and the Italian beauties and all of that. So this one was actually kind of made up for the other one being so depressing. This one was actually really enjoyable to read. I also read The Voyage of Barracks by Stuart Petrie. This is one of my favorite, favorite children's books and I enjoy it so much every time that I reread it. The Gunn family love their beautiful country home, but when a nasty factory is built across the road, they decide to attach a balloon to the top of their house and go flying all around the world looking for a new home, somewhere peaceful to live. I love all the different places that they visit, a desert oasis, an island full of cannibals, the top of the Acropolis, and a tiny village in the Swiss Alps, and the beautiful beaches of the French Riviera. The adventure is so much fun, there's always something crazy happening, and I really love the characters of each person in the Gunn family. I especially love Mrs. Gunn and her daughter Petal. They are strong women who conquer the world with their kindness and compassion. I just love the way each member of the family has their own personality and they all work together so well. I always give this book five stars. And of course, I also read The Mouse Trap by Agatha Christie, and I've already talked about that one in another video. And I read Bambi by Felix Salton, and I loved it so much, and I'm already doing another video about that one as well. And I read Pocket Full of Rye, which I've already talked about in another video. So look for links for those up above and down in the description. I also read a short story from Agatha Christie, In a Glass Darkly. This one is a definite departure from her regular like murder mystery kind of story. It's about this man who is visiting some friends of his and he looks in a mirror, so a glass, and he sees a vision of the future. And based on this one little detail that he sees in this vision, he interprets it incorrectly and everyone's lives are changed. And then years and years later in the future, it appears that his vision of the future is coming true. And then he notices that that one detail should have given him the clue to have interpreted it correctly and anyway. So it's definitely more supernatural rather than a mystery. There's not really much 
mystery about it. But it was certainly very interesting. I did not like any of the characters. I thought they were not smart people and they didn't make good decisions and they were foolish. <laughs> but there you are. I don't know. It was certainly interesting and it certainly had a sort of strange fascination about it. And of course I always love Agatha Christie and her amazing writing style. I think I would probably give this short story three stars. And I also started reading Cousin Phyllis by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is a bit of a longer short story. I guess it's more of a, of a novella really. So I'm actually a tiny bit behind and I need to get caught up and finish Cousin Phyllis and then I will let you guys know all of my thoughts about Elizabeth Gaskell. So far I am enjoying it a lot. I am really really loving this story. I really hope that it has some kind of happy ending. <laughs> and I still need to get caught up and read Mark Twain's The Man That Corrupted Hadleyburg. So I am the teensiest bit behind. I just need to finish up kind of the Elizabeth Gaskell novella and one short story from Mark Twain and I will be well on my way. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what are some of the good books that you've been reading lately. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.